All right, guys, so we're back again. Uh, Thursday episode with Adam. Hey, man. Yes. How you doing? Uh, so, what do you want to talk about today, Chris? One, one uh, on? interesting question that came up. Uh, some people think that when you do forms, yep. you're doing meditation, you're doing Qigong meditation. Uh, so, because yeah, we're all about Wing Chun, yeah. in this case, people think that when you're doing the Silim Tao, yeah. slowly, as it should be done, that mm -hmm. you're actually doing qigong. meditating and doing qigong. Yeah, I'm getting very uh, specific about this. Um, I read some articles about that when I was younger too. That Silim Tao is qigong. Oh, I'm gonna try. To, okay, even if we look at some of the most basic concepts of meditation and qigong, obviously when you're doing Silim Tao, you're learning to relax. You're learning to calm down. Being in a present moment. Um, you're learning to relax your mind and your body. So in that sense, it is the most basic form of meditation, sure. But when you start saying that it is like the way sometimes the tone that I hear is, is no, it is Qigong. They say it like it's some, it's not. So let, let's uh, because let's yeah. break down Qigong. What is Qigong? Oh, man, we need to... Let's simplify it, compress it. Let's, oh, let's just look at the most elementary, basic white belt elements, right? Ability to work and feel with some of the organs in your body, like your liver, like your spleen, like your kidneys, your heart, and so forth, right? Uh, controlled breathing, diaphragm breathing, reverse breathing, condensed breathing, working with your bone, your bone marrow, working with your fascia between your muscle and your tendons, right? Ability to extend into your field, to feel your field, right? Ability to expand inside your body, pungent in all directions, buoyancy, right? Feeling under the ground. Um, all these things are very, very basic Qigong work. That, none of that is in Zulim Tao. Zero. So when you start saying Zulim Tao or, is, or Gong Fu forms for that matter is Qigong, to me it's pretty irresponsible if it's unintentional. And if it is intentional, then it's very disrespectful. It's the same as when I met a grandmaster in, um, I won't say who it is, but one finger Zen. Qigong, very high level Qigong master. One of the better Qigong masters I've ever met in my life, right? But I was very disappointed at the end of our session, in my visit, that he actually said, you don't have to learn Kung Fu. I said, why? And he said, because if you do this Qigong, it is Kung Fu. <clears throat> and I touched hands with him. He didn't know any Kung Fu. Like, you can go through him. Even though, even someone with very low level martial arts skill can go right through him, right? For him, just because you're good at Qigong, doesn't mean you can disrespect Kung Fu and say, you don't need to learn Kung Fu. Qigong is Kung Fu. If you learn this, you can fight. That's a tall order to say. So when people do reverse is true, when people do Kung Fu forms or whatever, and they say, this is Qigong, you don't have to learn Qigong now. That's like a professional tennis player saying, you don't, if you do this tennis training that I taught you, you can automatically be a professional basketball player because they're both sports. What do you think of that, Chris? Yeah, no. It's stupid and disrespectful, right? And I hear that all the time when people, it doesn't even have the most basic elementary elements of Qigong in there that I just, some of the elements I refer to, right? Likewise in Qigong, just because you do Qigong, you think you can fight, it's like, hmm. So respect the discipline. Yeah. And uh, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane, yeah. Yeah, man. And, but right. in history though, historically, there are people that actually was responsible. When they learned Qigong, they didn't say, I don't have to learn how to fight. And when they learned Kung Fu, they didn't say, oh, that is Qigong. They didn't do that. They actually took decades of experience and actually got really good at Qigong and got really good at Kung Fu. And their life work was to merge the two together, which eventually Kung Fu actually was Qigong and Qigong was Kung Fu. And those are people that found the internal arts, right? So there are people that got that good, but... Arts like Xing Yi. Tai Chi, Bagua, Xing Yi... Um, to some degree, Sistema, each one, Luhi, Bafa, Aikido, Aikido Jitsu, some lineages in Ninjitsu, which you probably can't find nowadays, but it goes on, internal arts, it's around the world, right? And these studies were blended together so they become one, right? But even at that situation, sometimes it's not even about the art, it's about, as always, about the individual. Even in an art that was blended by the founder perfectly, doesn't mean that people that follow it can do it. Like maybe you're learning an art that has both component, but maybe you get really good at just one side of it. That happens all the time, right? So like when I was learning with one of the last living 
He's probably passed away now. Disciple of Hong Jai in each one. Each one is a system that was where Qigong and Gong Fu was merged together. But he said to me, he said, Hao Gai Mo Yan Yi Kun. That means there's no one in each one that can pass this on, that can do what the founder did. So just because the teachings was intact doesn't mean you, you got good at book, right? So when you do Silim Tao, if you want to change that definition as mindfulness meditation, then sure, it's mindfulness meditation. You're learning to be present, you learn to relax, blah, blah, blah. But if you start saying, no, this is Qigong, now you got to really, you know, just because you're moving slow motion and relaxing doesn't make it Qigong. Just, or like people will talk about breath work, I'm controlling my breathing, so I'm doing Qigong. No, there's more to it than that, right? Or, or I remember one guy actually told me, if I'm moving slow, that is Tai Chi. I don't have to study Tai Chi. So you don't even have to go and learn Tai Chi. You can just take someone that never had any training, drink a coffee slow motion, so now it's Tai Chi. I don't have to go learn Tai Chi. So you're making like really irresponsible statement, right? So at the yeah. very least, they are uh, confused. About what she goes, yes, yeah. or or you know, they're trying to make money, or they're being disrespectful yeah. for whatever reason, chip on the shoulder, yeah. and so on. That's not good because these arts are dying, so it's important to be responsible, right? Like my grandmother did um, when she was alive, uh, rest in peace. She did Tai Chi in Hong Kong because she had a bad posture and bad knees. So you know, in, in China, if you got bad health, doing Tai Chi is very common in, amongst old people. Every day in the park, you can see a lot of senior citizens doing Tai Chi, and it's a beautiful social thing. But I told her to stop doing Tai Chi because she showed me what she did, and I said, you know, Grandma, that's not good for you. She said, was Tai Chi supposed to be good for you? I'm like, yeah, if you found a good teacher. So eventually, she, her knees got worse. She ended up using a cane because of Tai Chi, because the way she did it, the alignment was wrong. It was taxing her ligaments even more, right? So just because you learn a healing art doesn't mean it'll heal you. You have to find a good teacher. Just because you're moving slow motion doesn't mean it's Tai Chi. Are you working with the fascia? Are you lining up your bones? Are you opening up your joints? Are you expanding the inside of your body? Are you going to your feel? Does every movement have a spiral? Are you using your intention? What I just said are very, very basic levels of Tai Chi. Very, I'm not even a specialist. Definitely not an expert at Tai Chi. But when she was doing her form, she was just doing techniques moving slow. That doesn't make it Tai Chi. And she can quote a bunch of poetry, but doing it, opening the pores of your body, these are all very basic ideas in Qigong across Tai Chi Bagua Xing Yi. So, man, you gotta be responsible with that, right? Because during the, I can't remember if it was the 60s or the 50s, but China had a health crisis. It's pretty famous. They always quote this in the internal arts. There wasn't enough hospitals and doctors for the communist government to deal with the enormous health crisis in China. And China has the most population in the world. So in order to solve that, China made Tai Chi the national health exercise. And because of that, everyone got better. But the way they did it is they actually got a pretty good Tai Chi teacher in every village. They didn't just wing it, right? And to me, that's pretty important because I, I can't speak for anywhere else because we live here. But if I, when I look around, we have a problem right now, health-wise. I mean, barring COVID. I mean, I'm talking about stress and mental illness. People are so edgy. I think it's important for people to learn some kind of uh, healing art, whether it's yoga or meditation or qigong or tai chi or reiki or whatever. But to find a good teacher is very, very important. And one of the things you can do is look at the elements that mix up in art and see if that art contains those elements. Like, you know a car has a steering wheel, right? You know a car has wheels, right? Now, if you go buy a car, it's, there's no wheels on it, there's no steering wheel, you know that's not a car. Even if the salesman tell you, this is a car. Well, same thing, you do Silim Tao, you, you call it Qigong. It doesn't contain any Qigong element that I just mentioned. So, that is not Qigong. So, being irresponsible, you're hurting the public. And something like, like a healing art is very important because we have a health crisis right now, right? So, be very yeah. careful who you listen to. And watch out for these guys that make those kind of claims. Right? And, or listen to your body, right? Or listen to your like body. in the case of my grandma, the more she did Tai Chi, the worse it ruined her knee, then it's time to stop. But a lot of times people don't stop, right? So, But that, I'm not trying to disrespect Wing Chun, obviously. I think Wing Chun is great, but stay in your lane. Wing Chun, you can learn to relax, you can be mindful, you can learn focus, you can learn intention, sure. But if you want to go deeper into Qigong, that's not Qigong. Right? In some mainland lineages, they claim that it is internal and they are doing internal Qigong work. I'll have to see it to make a comment, but I am just commenting on 
the mainstream Wing Chun, right? That in Silunta that we see, that's for fighting. That's not, you know. I hope that, you know, answers your question. Anything yeah. else? No, that's all for today. All right. See you next week, guys. <laughs>